What's going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome to the video. So some of you may know, I'm actually a medical student studying in London, um, but I'm a postgraduate. So I did my last degree in the University of Birmingham, which is in biomedical science. And I'm getting a lot of uh, messages and emails from you guys asking about how I'm funding my degree, because uh, funding a second undergraduate degree is a little bit different um, than, than funding a postgraduate degree. So I thought I'd put together a quick video to kind of explain my financial circumstances and um, maybe give you guys a few ideas about how you can finance your degree as well if you're planning on applying for an undergraduate medicine degree. But do bear in mind, this information is from the year that's just passed. And funding sometimes can vary from year to year. So do make sure you do a bit of research to make sure that what I'm saying is valid for your year. But yeah, let's get straight into the video. So the thing about having a second undergraduate degree is that you're not actually eligible for a tuition fee loan, which I guess kind of makes sense because if everyone in the UK took out loans, there'd be no money for anyone else. But it is quite hard. It makes it a lot harder for us as, as postgraduates. So that is something you need to take in, into consideration. Good news is though, you do get a maintenance loan. So I don't think it's as much as the undergraduates get. You do get a maintenance loan, which can help you know pay for your maintenance fees. And although it's not that much, um, it really does make a difference and does help pay you know for my living costs. So the second way you can pay for your degree is by getting a job. So I don't actually have a job right now, but I know a lot of my friends who are postgraduates do because I saved up a lot of money during the summer. So I had four months of summer after I graduated and I had a full-time job. I was working nine to five, five days a week. Um, so I saved up enough money to kind of you know, last me the year. But although you can work during the summer years, in your third and fourth and fifth year in your clinical years, summers are uh, cut down by quite a lot. You might find it quite hard to find the time to get a job and work. But a lot of my friends who are postgrads do have jobs. So one job that you can do as a postgraduate, uh, which makes a lot of money, is tutoring. Um, a lot of my friends do tutor and you can get at least you know, £20 an hour doing tutoring. And because we always have a Wednesday afternoon off, you can always work on Wednesday afternoons. You can also work on the weekends as well. So you can do, you, you, know, you can get like a good 15 hours a week of work if you do want to. Seeing as you're a postgraduate as well, I'm sure you know how to work already and I'm sure first year wouldn't be that difficult for you. So you can fit in a job if you do want to. And because all the lectures in King's College London are actually recorded, you don't have to go to lectures. Um, so if you do want to work on summer afternoons, you can go ahead and do that because the lectures aren't compulsory. And if you do decide to work on weekends, um, do bear in mind that you, this will take a toll on your work. Some of my friends who were working at the start of the year have now quit their jobs because they found that you know it's just too much. So it really depends on how you are and how you manage your time and where you'll be spending your time. Um, so do bear that in mind as well because you do have to kind of find a balance between working and you know the degree as well. The third way you can possibly fund your degree um, is through scholarships. So there are a number of companies out there who are willing to give you money to help you finance your degree. I actually had an interview with the leather sellers company and they were willing to give me £4,000 um, to help cover my maintenance costs. But unfortunately I had to withdraw my application because I ended up getting a bit more funding than I thought I would um, so I wasn't eligible anymore. But I'm going to put a link in the description about the leather, leather sellers company and that's only one uh, company that can give you money. There's so many different companies out there so have a look at scholarships as well. I know some of my friends are on scholarships um, so do check that out. The fourth way and probably the most obvious way of paying a degree is through financial help from your parents. So right now I'm kind of semi-independent um, so although I am funding most of my degree some of the money I have is coming from my parents and I know that's a bit annoying to kind of like rely on your parents again uh, for another few years but you know hopefully one day when you're a doctor you can kind of you know buy them a nice car or buy them a nice house so just make sure you kind of like sit down with your parents before you know obviously starting your degree i remember the summer before starting medical school i kind of sat down with my dad and my mom and i was like you know are you able to you know to fund me um i've kind of put like an excel sheet together and tried to predict how much money i would need for my parents and i was like you know how are you finding this like are you okay with this and is this something you can you can manage so do have a you know an honest chat with them and see um, how much they can help you with so number four is um, you know getting money for your parents although it is a bit annoying um, sometimes you just have to do it because you know, finances aren't that easy. So the fifth way you might be able to pay for your degree is through hardship funds from university. So before you apply to university, uh, check out the websites and see if they are, if you are eligible for any like hardship funds at all, because your circumstances obviously differ from other people. And I should also say that the final year of medicine is paid for. So all you have to do is try and fund your first four years and the fifth year is paid for by the NHS in terms of tuition fees. So that does help a lot. So, you know, there's only four years and you kind of have to struggle and last. The fifth year will be paid for. And so it's kind of nice to know. And also in your third and fourth and fifth year, um, during your clinical years. If you are placed in a hospital or a GP practice outside London, the university actually pays for your accommodation. Um, so I'm gonna really try and get out of London so the, so the university can you know, help me out with my, my costs. Funding a medical degree can be quite hard. I'm not gonna lie, you know, it's, it's, it's five years, it's a five year commitment and there is a lot of money to pay. You know, I have my um, university degree to pay for, my tuition fees, I have my maintenance fees to pay for, um, which is quite a lot living in London. I have a lot of money coming to my bank account and uh, yeah, that's just unfortunate, but you know, that's just how it is. If you wanna do medicine, like I said, it is a bit hard to fund a degree, but there are a number of ways you can do it. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment down below. And I'll be sure to reply and help you guys out with that. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I really hope this video has been somewhat informative. Make sure you're subscribed as well. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.